Welcome everyone. This is Les Muller from Data Leaders, your host on the Data Leaders podcast. And today on the show, I have with me Martin Dosing. Martin is the director of Global Manufacturing Master Data at Lego, and uh, he will be speaking at our Data Leaders Transformation Roundtable hosted by Telenor in the headquarters in Oslo. It will take place in April on the 11th. And um, Martin will speak about a very interesting topic, creating a business partner mindset in, in Master Data. Uh, Martin, welcome on the show. Thank you. Fantastic. And uh, for those uh, audience members who do not know you yet, can you just uh, give us a brief introduction uh, about uh, you know, your current role over at Lego and also your journey of, of becoming a data leader? Yes, definitely. So yeah, my name is Martin Dussing, uh, 44 years old, uh, and I'm a bachelor in uh, production engineering uh, originally. And I actually, uh, I started uh, my career uh, immediately after graduating as an engineer at, at the Lego Group. So I've been with the Lego Group now for 19 years. Uh, started in, uh, in our packing facility as a project engineer, uh, optimizing, uh, uh, processes and, and layouts in the production. Uh, then uh, after a good period there, I uh, switched to uh, quality and have been uh, uh, approximately 10 years in, in quality in, in various roles around uh, quality management. Uh, and then uh, the last uh, three years of my time in quality, I uh, changed to the role of uh, people leader, uh, heading up the quality and operations uh, department in, in uh, our factory in, in Billund. Uh, and then for the la past uh, six years, I've been heading up uh, global manufacturing master data, um, where we are responsible for creation and maintenance of master data related to our supply chain planning and, and production uh, facilities. So that's uh, yeah, creation of uh, materials, bill of materials, uh, work centers, and, and so on. So the whole foundation for uh, for enabling our uh, production planning. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the role I'm, I'm in now. Fantastic. And uh, creating a business partner mindset in, in Master Data, I know that this is something that a lot of people you know, have high on their agenda. Uh, I mean, why did you choose this particular topic? Well, uh, coming into Master Data, what struck with the, me the most was actually how uh, how invisible you are when uh, things uh, go well, when everything is under control, and then how visible you are when things are not under control. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, we, we are, were in a situation where things were quite stable, stable processes, good quality uh, level in our, our data. So actually, we were quite invisible uh, in the organization. Uh, uh, but also there was, uh, this uh, behavior of uh, more reactive behavior in the in the department of uh, why were we not involved earlier and uh, they should have known that we should uh, be involved here uh, to to be able to have the correct uh, data set up uh, for this new process or, or whatever so uh, both uh, frustrations in the team but also sometimes we needed actually to do uh, workarounds to be able to to uh, to be able to cater for, for these new initiatives in the organization. And uh, when we need to do these uh, workarounds, we also compromise our quality control of, of data and, and there is uh, an increased risk of uh, failure. So you can say that was sort of the, the primary reason for, for trying to see if we could get involved earlier in, in these uh, new initiatives and, and thereby uh, make sure that we had the right structure from the beginning. Hmm. And and what uh, uh, what successes that you've had with uh, this approach so far? I know that you know these things can can take time. Uh, definitely, it's a it's it's a continuous uh, uh, process. But how did that start? So so that initiative for you, uh, how did that you know kind of unfold? It was uh, mainly uh, there was also we've been in a in a in a period of time with the extreme growth in in the company. And that uh, seemed to continue. So there was also a, a sort of from from the top level also an, an anticipation that everybody sort of stepped up to that agenda and, and, and took uh, their responsibility uh, towards that. And we could see it when the, uh, with the 
increasing number of uh, factories and uh, products and so on, the, the complexity uh, overall would increase and thereby uh, the risk of failure be uh, even bigger if we had these uh, workarounds. So, uh, so that was actually uh, how it how it started, uh, uh, and then uh, began to drive uh, dialogues in the team around this how we could do that uh, better. And uh, there's this uh, interesting contradiction about uh, having these uh, typical master data profiles uh, that are. Uh, more introvert uh, types maybe uh, focused on the, on the, on on the data part and then uh, trying to uh, to get more outgoing in in the organization so uh, so we had a, a lot of uh, interesting dialogues also had some external uh, coaches uh, coming in helping on on this uh, on this journey and defining our mission and vision around uh, around that Mm. And I know it can be challenging, especially when you consider that, you know, most people who work in data, as you pointed out, tend to be more introverted, but these organizational transformations, you know, always require, uh, you know, very refined skills in communication and, and, and business alignment. I mean, what were your main challenges, you know, when, when kind of leading uh, that transformation and, and that change in, in mindset? I think the main challenge was actually everybody was actually more or less onto the idea at least after a while. <laughs> uh, so there was uh, some change management uh, there, uh, but actually the 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 main challenge uh, is uh, falling back to to own behaviors along the way uh, or to old behaviors uh, along the way. Uh, so so keeping keeping the momentum, keeping the focus. Uh, because it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a difficult part, I think, yeah. Yeah, keeping the focus is, is crucial. And uh, when you uh, talk about, you know, falling back to old uh, behaviors that might not be, uh, you know, as beneficial, uh, can you give maybe a, a couple examples of some of those old behaviors that you think are better to get rid of? It's just uh, you are many times biased as, as the, the profile you are, biased to, to, to uh, to take on a certain role, and uh, if you are a little bit under, can just be time pressure, but also uh, many times out of your comfort zone uh, when you need to be uh, more uh, outgoing. Uh, so uh, yeah, then uh, when a little bit under pressure, it's easy just to fall back in the in the old uh, habit of uh, just uh, uh, being at your desk at your computer and 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 doing uh, what you feel most comfortable about doing mm -hmm. and, and how did you guys remedy that so how did you how did you overcome uh, those uh, unhealthy tendencies so to say yeah, well actually uh, at, at some point we actually uh, had a metric around uh, sort of having we call them stakeholder meetings but have identified uh, key stakeholders in the organization uh, where we actually tracked that that you did have a uh, that you did have your meeting with with this uh, guy, so it's actually quite uh, low practical, but but simply just to to force uh, ourselves into uh, to uh, to having that uh, dialogue with the, the the peers in the organization. Hmm. And uh, so, if you think about it, what advice would you give to people who are in similar situations, right? So, apart from you know actually. Uh, you know, bringing this to the agenda, actually pushing these uh, meetings forward. Maybe, do you have any best practice advice that you think it would be important for people like you to know it's something that, you know, you would benefit it from as an advice at the beginning of this journey? Uh, definitely. Uh, when you start up, uh, have, uh, have patience. It, it's not something that will uh, come overnight. So, uh, so uh, if, you, if you have that ambition, uh, yeah, you're in it for the for the long haul. You can say uh, it's uh, it's going to take uh, time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and why do you think that in general, actually, you know, keeping this a priority? Why do you think it's such an important? Uh, topic now, if you think about the changing uh, data landscape, so professionals who are in major organizations are looking to drive similar transformation initiatives. Why do you think it became you know such an important topic? Uh, I can say at least for uh, for my own uh, case, uh, 
having a, a company in, in, in this uh, rapid uh, growth, it was uh, very easy to be overlooked, uh, you can say, in, with all the other initiatives going on to sort of chase, uh, chase this uh, growth. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if, if we hadn't uh, done this, I, I think that a lot of uh, the, the uh, earnings we have made on, uh, on uh, ways to, uh, to be more effective in our uh, ways of working and things like that, that, that would have not have been uh, initiated if, if we didn't uh, do what we did. Mm. Definitely, there is a lot to gain uh, there, but you have to go about it uh, the right way. I think that's why everyone is now looking for best practice. And uh, that kind of leads us to the specifics uh, of your session. So it's titled Business Partner Mindset in Master Data. Can you just uh, you know, walk us through briefly uh, on what your session will actually cover? Uh, yes, uh, I, will, uh, I will start by... Uh... <laughs> By explaining the background why we why we actually uh, went in in this direction and where we where we came from, so sort of what I already uh, touched uh, briefly upon. Um, uh, and then I'll uh, I'll go uh, a bit more into the details around uh, the business uh, partner mindset, how we how we defined it, and 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 how we uh, yeah how we came to to that uh, conclusion. Perfect. Um, uh, and then uh, speak uh, more into the to the long journey and and uh, and also uh, some experience around uh, yeah falling falling back in old uh, old habits and, and and keeping the the momentum and uh, yeah uh, and then uh, speak a little into what are then the the main achievements we actually succeeded with uh, uh, which I see came from from that uh, journey we've been been on. Fantastic. And, you know, this session itself, is, it will be pretty interactive. So uh, usually uh, these presentations are divided into three parts, uh, each around 20 minutes long. Uh, there will be all together around 30, 35 people in the room. Everyone is a senior practitioner in a data-related function. And first, you will kind of present that case study and, uh, you know, share with the audience how you uh, succeeded. And uh, then there will be a group discussion, and then each table will kind of present uh, their conclusions to the uh, entire group. How do you think that the audience members will be able to put the sessions uh, takeaways and the learnings into practice when they go back to their own businesses? Uh, well, first of all, I've uh, in the network with other companies I've been in in, in related uh, function. I I definitely hear that uh, some of the same uh, uh, challenges exist in, in those uh, areas. Uh, so, so I think uh, it's, uh, it's definitely not, uh, the, it's not rocket science uh, that uh, I'm uh, presenting. It's, it's very uh, down to earth, uh, but it's uh, probably more around uh, stamina and, <laughs> and uh, it's just, uh, yeah, leading, leading the team uh, and maybe also focusing a little bit of uh, what are the different profiles you have in your team. Uh, uh, so, so I guess uh, that would be some of the things they can take back. Fantastic. And I think those people who are working on similar initiatives now, it's also good to get, you know, confirmations about their, you know, current approaches and also, you know, learning some new ideas. So, uh, you know, for course correction uh, uh, purposes. And if you had to capture only one idea that you like them to take back to their businesses? I mean, what would that be? One of the observations that uh, actually came from one of my own team members is uh, earlier we, uh, uh, there was often a discussion of uh, what is our mandate? When, when can we say no? And when, uh, when can we not say no in, in the organization? Uh, and actually uh, a few months uh, back this uh, same uh, or this guy came to me from the team and said uh, it's actually funny we, we actually we we actually never say no to anything we we we, uh, we explain the the complexity or the the consequences of of, of this uh, to to the relevant parties in the organization and and through that we uh, uh, we um, uh, we come up with the with the right solution, or or, or maybe uh, pause the initiative, or, or something like that. So so it 
the discussion around uh, when can we say no has has disappeared and it's more become into a collaborative uh, approach uh, so i don't know if that could <laughs> be used no the abs absolutely that's actually uh, that's actually great so i think uh, this is advice that everyone you know can follow uh, mm -hmm. with positive uh, uh, results so fantastic we all look forward to uh, that session martin and uh, uh, yeah we'll meet you in, in oslo on the uh, on the 11th uh, of april and uh, before i let you go i would be keen to uh, pick your brain on another topic which mm -hmm. is uh, you know future trends so now with a changing data landscape new technologies you know pop up basically every day every week uh, is there any a particular technology or trend that you are uh, you know, specifically interested about? Uh, yes, what is uh, triggering me at the moment uh, would be the robotics process automation. So uh, I'm quite curious whether some of the quite manual processes that we still have uh, handling uh, data, whether uh, that could be handled by uh, by a computer in, in, instead, uh, and I've uh, I've not uh, been into the details around uh, the RPA uh, uh, yet, but uh, we have some uh, resources internally in in the company uh, where I started a, a small dialogue around uh, that. So so uh, so that's definitely something that is interesting. Yeah. And what kind of timeline are you guys? Uh, looking at if you think about the actual implementation and leveraging this uh, effectively I know that you know these uh, these initiatives can take time but if you think about the time frame uh, what do you have in mind uh, well I hope uh, within uh, one to two years that uh, that, that we have uh, sort of the first uh, processes implemented uh, in, in that way uh, Fantastic. Well, uh, good luck with that, Martin. Um, I'm sure you, you. <laughs> you guys will do a great job. Uh, and again, thank you for uh, doing the interview. It was uh, very educational and uh, we all look forward to meeting you uh, in April. We can find out a bit more about um, how, you, uh, how you actually did uh, and how you actually produced those consistent results. Um, so yeah, it's been great talking to you. Do you have anything else that you, you would like to share with our audience before we, uh, before we disengage? No, not really. Uh, just uh, looking forward to, uh, to coming to Oslo and, and participate in, uh, in the day there. I think it will be very interesting. Fantastic. And uh, I think I can speak to, uh, uh, speak to our members and uh, the other attendees that they are, you know, also looking forward to it. So it's been great talking to you and have a great day. And, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.